we can't even let it approve the minutes. Okay. Um, my name is Jason Beatty, Chair of the Economic Development Committee for the City of Clemson. Um, this is the September 23rd meeting for that committee, um, and we will officially call the meeting to order. Um, again, my name is Jason Beatty. I'm the owner of Clemson Variety and Frame in downtown Clemson. I'm Cameron Farish, uh, owner of Tiger Town Tavern, downtown Clemson. Um, Susan Zimmerman, owner of uh, Bohicket Road Online Commerce. We have Singletary, Singletary Investments Corporation. We have uh, both Clemson Wine Bar and 2.6 Coaching and Consulting in Clemson. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Uh, Doug Zerbel, the owner of Your Pie, is actually en route. I received a message, so um, he, will, he can arrive and will actually give us a forum um, to be able to have votes. Um, so if it's all right with everyone, we will just skip the approval of the minutes and come back to it once we do have quorum. Um, and we will go uh, call Shannon Quattlebaum to talk about uh, a new ordinance change. Hi guys, so part of Clemson Next, we looked at, um, we're looking at creating a new committee for the city that's a housing and community life committee that's going to deal with kind of affordable housing, um, quality against throughout the housing throughout the city, and also um, diversity of our neighborhoods and encouraging, um, encouraging neighborhood involvement in city affairs. And when we looked at creating that, we also looked at the um, the bylaws that created the Economic Development Committee, this committee, and we wanted to update those bylaws a little bit. One, so that more diversity in businesses were represented on the committee, um, really as far as geographic location within the city, right now it's heavily weighted towards the downtown corridor of businesses, and throughout comes the next, there's been a lot of discussions about trying to expand what we consider Clemson. So expanding that to include a business along Pendleton Road, along 93, along 123, and making those designated seats um, to make it very obvious that this is a citywide council and looking at issues from a citywide perspective. Uh, so one of the things the new, the proposed draft changes, draft changes to the ordinance does is change the way those seats are allocated. Uh, and the other thing we did was look at the mission. One of the items, the very last line of the mission for this committee was to um, also advocate for residential housing and student housing. And we thought that with the creation of the new committee that would also include a student housing component, that that would make sense to remove that from, from something that this committee is working on. So I'm basically presenting it to y'all for some feedback. We're anticipating presenting this to City Council at their second meeting in October, so we have plenty of time to to get feedback and go back and forth. But we'd just like to see what your thoughts are on that. Has the Clemson Next put out any feelers to see if any business owners in those particular corridors would actually participate in serving on the committee? I think there were some of those business owners on the Clemson Next committee okay. um, who seemed to be interested in taking another step in their involvement. And then it would come down to a kind of do a recruitment effort, uh, probably for January, when the, the committees kind of turn over for the next year, to make sure we fulfill fill as many of those seat requirements as we can. And not to drill down too much, because I know you, you try and cast as wide a net as possible to get folks who, are going, who will actively participate, right? Not just say they'll do it, but actively participate. Um, and this committee is heavy on service industry. Mm -hmm. Has there been any discussion to say we would like, as I, as I, as I, I think I'm the only retail on the committee. But um, e commerce. Well, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm primarily okay. e commerce. Yeah. yeah. But that's. Has there been any thought of delineating that even more? There's been some discussion about including someone who trying to figure out how to include someone more from the entrepreneurship side and the funding, so the kind of the venture capital side, kind of having a seat designated for that. Um, and then also maybe designating out kind of like a 
someone like Susan, so an entrepreneurship, somebody right. that maybe doesn't have a physical location in the city. So those, that's some of the feedback that we've gotten so far. Okay. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not even suggesting that, because let's face it, we're, we're a tourist town. And to be service industry heavy in a committee that's to advise council on various matters, I, I don't think that's a problem. I just didn't know. I, I guess my warning is, is if, you, if you drill down too narrow on who can fill a seat, mm -hmm. you might have problems filling seats. That, and I think when we looked at that, that's why we went with the geographical location of the business instead of the type of business. Okay. And we were hoping that since city council looks at all the applications, that what they would take into consideration is also having a diversity of businesses represented. So Cameron and I were discussing the Pendleton Road mm -hmm. corridor. How many businesses are on there that would even have? Um, There's just that little, that little area. And so would the ordinance read either or? Like you, you would pull something, someone from 93 or Pendleton Road, or you'd have to have a member from Pendleton Road, 93, and 123? So right now the ordinance reads you'd have to have one from each area. But we might need to look at updating that so if there's not one available from that area, it's filled with an at-large from somewhere else. Okay. Would there be a problem having nine members instead of eight so there would never be a tie? No, we could do that. I, I, it just makes logical sense okay. to me that we would always have a resolution if we had nine members. Yeah. Okay. And in and, and one area that we are, I think that we're lacking representation might be maybe the ninth member could be a a professional, whether that be doctor, lawyer. I mean, okay. their time is valuable. They may not want to do it, but that might be our, our uh, administrator of health care. You know, we, we do have a, a good amount of that in the town. I, I don't know if that's viable or not. Okay. Public school or private school teachers? Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, any profession like that would be a, a teacher, a, a nurse, a doctor, lawyer, accountant. Um, some sort of so would we be looking for the you're looking for the person that owns that professional business uh, or just someone that works there what type of representation I think I think just I mean it didn't necessarily have to I don't think be an owner someone who has a intimate knowledge of the business and the effects that decisions made by city council and this committee might have on the business I think would be fine okay because no one's an officer of the company. Yeah, not, maybe an officer of the company. Okay. But like a teacher, there are very few private schools in Clemson. I guess only two that I know of, really. So that would be difficult, but maybe. But they can be a resident of the city. Yeah, that's true. Necessarily a business yeah. owner. I think but, they'd have unique insights into how people are living. Yes, yeah, they do. Children and they see families all the time. And there is supposed to be, a, you know, an ex officio non-voting member from the school district. Oh. So there oh. are six, there's quite a number of ex officio non-voting members on this committee, and we'd probably make an effort in January to reach back out and fill those positions too, just to provide a greater perspective. And just to catch, uh, we, Doug Zerbel has just arrived, so we do have some now. That's all right. Yeah. We, we're just discussing the ordinance to kind of um, maybe add to or change some of the uh, makeup, makeup, of, makeup the of this committee. This so, is coming from the Clemson Next recommendations. Yeah. They would like to make a recommendation by the second October meeting to council about what we're talking about now. Um, okay. One of those being, uh, Shannon covered earlier, in Clemson Next it was recommended that we are very downtown heavy, represented on this committee. So the 123 corridor, 93 corridor, and Pendleton Road corridor don't really have an, I mean, they can show up and have input, but they don't have an official voting input. So to try and kind of shuffle the deck on that, and Cameron suggested maybe going to a nine person committee to break any ties. Yeah. So what's our numbers right now? Eight. We're at eight. Voting members. Right. So. I think the other area that would be represented is Patrick Square, Patrick as far Square. as having yeah. a designated right. seat. Is there any way to, I mean, those are really close, the Pendleton Corridor and the, the Patrick Square could maybe be uh, shared. You could pick an either or from there to maybe okay. try and help fill the seat. Yeah, we'll go back and look at that and see how to change that and also how to get us up to nine. Right. 
Do y'all have any other comments or? You mentioned, well, I think earlier we were originally talking about uh, preference given to people who live within the city limits. And I think when you get into drilling down to a smaller area, like for example, Patrick Square area, the business owners that are in that area, there's only one business owner that actually lives in the city limits of Clemson. So that means that preference would always be given to that person for a seat. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, you know, if there may be several qualified people that be in that area, um, might be multiple, somebody who owns multiple businesses and who might have more insights from different, different perspectives. So is the ordinance saying that, that it's it's gonna it's gonna give preference to those who both own a business, run a business, and live in the city? Yes. Yeah. Okay. As at this point, I don't think that was. I mean, I don't live. None of us. Yeah. <laughs> well, and people live in Clemson Downs have an owner share, so technically, if you wanted to tap that pool. I mean, we're gonna have to go out and recruit hard. I guess my only pullback <laughs> to that is. Doug can't vote in the, in the city. Cameron can't vote in the city. I cannot vote in the city. Mm -hmm. The only voice I have, but my livelihood is very much tied to this city. Mm -hmm. The only voice I have, I can't vote at the ballot box, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can't, I, I don't have a voice there. The only voice I have is through this committee. Okay. Um, and if, if that's the way it goes, that's the way it goes. But that, to me, you live in the city, you work in Greenville, you still get a vote in the city. But I live in Easley, but I spend six days a week in the city, downtown. I don't know that someone should get preference over that because their address is in the city. And that's just me. I think when honest. we looked at doing this, we did this in order to make this a smaller committee. Because otherwise we're looking at having you have six or seven business owners that also don't live in the city, and then you have somewhere, you know, three to four to five residents that do live in the city, the committee keeps getting bigger. So we'll go back to the drawing board and look at this. We're trying to... So were you going to pair off the ones that are just residents that have... Because there's two seats here that, that are... That that are just represent seats. residents. Just residents. Right. Okay. Well, so you're trying uh, to double dip, I guess. We Shannon, were trying to double dip <laughs> to get Shannon, people that which, fill two requirements. Sorry, you know, the, which group recommended that they not only be business but also resident? That's come out of pretty much a lot of our Clemson Next. And I think it came out of us looking at the community. The, before you got here, I was saying we're also creating a new housing and community life committee. It's going to deal more with um, neighborhood and housing issues. And for that one, we really wanted representation from throughout the city by, by different voting precincts. Um, so then I think when we turned to this committee, and Clemson Next was pretty clear about the geographic locations, we followed a similar model of kind of geographic location first, but then also having some at large. Um, we can. We can go back and look at this and, and revisit this some more and figure out how how to make this work. It, is it possible to look into the city's, for lack of a better word, database on business licenses in Clemson and see what the percentage is of ownership of who owns the percentage of owners operators that are in their city residents mm -hmm. and the percentage of owner operators that are outside the city limits. Andy, is it possible to do that? Um, yeah, we need like, like, a lot of info on that. Um, the problem you're going to have is that sometimes the, the contact person we have isn't even a part of the business. It's like the business license fee comes from a corporate office or something. You know, okay. It, it doesn't apply. It's not like everyone's originating or has their it depends on what, because I remember, it depends on what address you put on it. I mean, yeah, I can put my store address or I can put my home it address. It won't be 100%. It'll be. I, I just, it, it, it would be an interesting metric for 
future economic development conversations to, to say that people want to do business here, but for some reason don't live here. I think the other concern is when you have business rep representation that's driving the economy of Clemson, and then over a period of time through attrition, you're going to be losing some of these members. You're going to get in people who might have preference who aren't necessarily driving the economy. I think when we joined this committee, some of us, it was, we could have called it the economic stifling committee. Because at the point when we joined, the, when I joined the committee, it was heavily weighted towards people who were upset to about that. growth, period. Um, it, it seems to have morphed into a, a more progressive idea, more some macro ideas now. But when, when I joined the committee, it was filled with people who were no voters because of what got the next committee started. You know, they wanted no on everything. Um, of course, our, the voting population of Clemson, the, the longtime residents, as they age out, they they tend to, some of them do tend to vote that way. They, they want to go to let's keep it like it is and not move it. Um, the people that are actively trying to make a buck. Um, so I think the challenge we're having is the mission of this committee as it was previously and as we're keeping it in the the draft proposal that's before y'all is not only to help your businesses be successful, but is also to attract, recruit new businesses, retain new businesses, help other businesses grow in the city, and across a wide variety of business types. So it's there's two almost competing missions this committee has of helping our established businesses continue to be successful, but also making room and recruiting and bringing in new businesses. And for some of that, I think we do want a, a resident's perspective of. Oh, absolutely. But I guess my point is, is the two seats, we already have that with the two seats that residents have. Mm -hmm. um, and again, if I were an absentee owner, I, I could see why that particular verbiage needed to be there. Mm -hmm. But again, I spend six days a week. Well, what would y'all think if we created more? be a larger committee, but more um, kind of at-large business owner seats without the requirement of living in the city. I don't know. I, I mean, and I don't even, and I, again, I, I haven't been in those meetings. Uh, I think we discussed last time as to whether or not my participation in the meeting would be helpful and which I, I would be willing to do. My point is, is the, the, the purpose of this committee is for economic development. For both those, the, the two things you said, to, to help our businesses and our neighbors' businesses grow and to attract new business. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are other committees within the city where residents have plenty of representation. I don't know of any other committee in the city where a non-resident could actually serve. So what would you guys think about us creating a like a percentage of the committee needs to be a resident, like 50% of the committee needs to be residents. Not specifying which or of Or whatever two or what ninths area. is. Um, you know, I joined the committee so that I could get involved in this community where I have my business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I differentiate economic development from housing, traffic, parks and rec, and all those other things, absolutely there should be a requirement around being a resident because if you, you, you wouldn't be representing the right frame of mind in terms of where that's going. Right? That's what you're serving. So, but economic development, I think we do want to attract people that don't necessarily live here so that we can grow the economy, right? We, I we think, don't... though, there's also this undercurrent of having people that live in this community that go for runs in this community, that shop in the community. Now, I'm not saying that you guys don't. But that their daily, their activities of daily life are in this community because the businesses that we bring in and the businesses that are here affect the activities of daily life that people are. And I mean, when you look at the ex officio members on this committee, it's got a university person, it's got someone from the school board. And there's four or five that are just they're wide ranging, but so there can be a greater perspective on how 
the operation of the businesses affects the daily life of people. And so I'm not saying we go back to it's com a completely resident driven committee. We're trying to find a middle path. I believe that a business owner is more vested than a resident. There's a lot more in creating a business. To be a resident, you buy a house, you pay your taxes. To be a business owner, there's licensing fees and there's uh, working with planning development. There's a lot more that's involved. There's a lot more skin in the game for a business owner than there is. So of course, a business is gonna want that city to grow and develop probably more than the resident does. And if you look at a 50%, um, looking to say that the committee must be comprised of 50%, then that's even pigeonholing it even more. Because then if you don't meet the 50%, then you're actively going out looking for somebody who is a resident instead of saying preference is given to a resident. Now, when I was asked to join the committee, I applied and it then was up to the discretion of council whether or not to take me. So the, so the city council who was duly elected made the decision to put me on this committee because they thought I would be well suited. Mm -hmm. So do we leave it at that? that we, do we leave That's, it on elected officials get to decide? That is still the same process that's gonna happen. So people, everyone will be invited to apply, the applications will go to city council and city council will decide who to appoint to this committee. But so could, in the wording of the proposal, it does say preference is given to, for, for certain requirements for each seat. It's, I, it's still up to, to that particular city council to so decide we, who they're going to appoint. We could leave it at preference and it's not a requirement. So they wouldn't have to pass a new ordinance to put someone on the committee that they thought would be an excellent addition, though not a resident. I would just hate to see person X who's a resident gets selected because we're giving preference to them versus this new business owner that just built a really nice new business on 123 that we want represented because he's not a resident. That, I would just hate to see us turn that person away for this person when, uh, when, we, would, when we would have, okay. you know. I, mean, I, I, I hear what y'all are saying and I get the direction yeah, that could. you're interested in. Let me go back and see what we can do to maybe make those more of preferences and less of requirements so that city council does get the idea when you're appointing we like a diversity of businesses both geographically and type of business represented on this committee i think we can all agree on that so do we need to make a formal motion to take back um i'm not quite sure how to make that motion to say um Sounds like you're I, I'm just well, I recommend it. And, I, and this is not a vote, but I, I mean, I would be a no vote I mean, for that if it said preference on a business owner. If those two, if the two seats that are on this committee mm -hmm. are, are specified for Clemson residents, and then in addition to that, it was preference given to business owners who also live in the city. Right, so when you look at the wording that we have right now, it says for those seats, for the different geographic areas, that that person must own a business in that particular area they're applying for. And then the preference would be given to an applicant that lived within the, the city. So if the three of you all applied for the downtown seat and one of you happened to live in Clemson, the idea is preference would probably be given to the person that lives in Clemson. Okay. That's how it's written right now. So beyond the requirement that you own a business in one of those locations, that that's it. Can you scroll down? Who's driving? Yeah. And if we need to, if you feel like those locations need to be updated. No, I think, I, I actually think the, and, and I probably should have led with that, but the, the representation by location, I think is a great idea. It's a great idea. Um, Keep scrolling down if you don't mind. I just want to see all of the at-large resident, at-large resident. So they still have two votes. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm just, and you can pass this on to the Clemson Next Committee who's coming up with this, the verbiage. 
plus the uh, real estate broker is required to live in the city limits. So that's Most also, yeah. yeah. So I, I guess I would be a no vote if that if the preference language stayed in there for business owners. Okay. Does it say primary residence? Because I think if you know some people own property within the city that's zoned residential, um, but they may not necessarily live in it. Especially like real estate brokers, you know, if they live, their primary residence is say out at Kiwiki or something. I'm pretty sure the spirit of that is if you have a vote, if you're registered to vote within the city limits. Yeah. I think we'll find that most of the real estate developers that are doing business in this town live on the lake, not in the city limits. Right. And but I want to be clear. Preference. It doesn't say mandatory. I want to no, be clear for the record. For the real estate. For real estate. Oh, real estate. Oh, okay. it's, it's mandatory. Gotcha. I want to be clear for the record. I am, I am not voting this way to protect my seat because I don't live in the city of Clemson. If, if someone wants to take this seat and wants to do this, that, that, that is quite all right. That is not why I'm saying this. And in fact, it, it, I don't even understand. Sometimes I even complain about, uh, complain about politicians and whatnot voting to preserve their jobs, which I don't think is right either. Um, but again, the reason I took, the reason I accepted, I was asked to serve on this committee reason I accepted was, and then when they told me that, I, I told them, I was like, look, I'm not a resident of Clemson. I can't serve on that committee. Like, oh, by the way, you're a business owner, you can. So this gave me a voice in the city that I don't have a vote in. And so that's why I'm here. Andy, how many seats do we have currently? Are there still eight? I was trying to look up the current roster. It's been changed a little bit, and I tried to find it before I came in here. I don't have it. Okay. Something, so, I, if, something I think that would be a good um, negotiation point with this is preference be given to a business owner who owns the business property in Clemson. So, so for example, I lease both of my locations, but if someone else actually is a business owner and they own the building, then they should get preference over me. Sure, I can see that because not only do they have the business, but they also own the building as well. That, that makes complete sense because they're going to be even more driven for the success of business development. I, I don't know. You run the risk of, a, of um, now you're showing preference towards a landowner, a person who actually owns property, yeah. which, I mean, wars have been fought over that. I, 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 I think I, there's a difference in this committee versus all of the other committees. And the difference is pure and simple. It's about economic development that we don't have, we would not, not being residents, we would not have an inferior or different viewpoint than a resident would have. Whereas the others, there's a vested interest and in, in a need for them to be the ones making those calls. Whereas economic development, we're, we're alive, we're active in the community. I think that the, having the two at large uh, residents is, is criteria enough and that you line out the uh, the, the requirement or the, the, that the preference would be given to the, to the resident. Okay. That's just my opinion. Okay. Well, I live in the city and I technically own a business in the city. And from my perspective, I want to make sure that the development part is always kept at the forefront. You see what I'm saying? Because one of the reason, reasons I got I wanted to be on this committee was to advocate for startups and people who feel like they can't earn a living by living here, that they have to go elsewhere to find work. I really respect and value all y'all who, you may not live in town, but you bring jobs and revenue here. Um, but again, that's, that's my pet project and feeling. I want to make sure that um, I'm always piping up because I want to be an advocate for those folks who are who are getting started, who would live here, and would really want to work here and want to be successful here, and they haven't had um, a real uh, a way of doing that up until now. But with all the technology we have, that's what I'm hoping to do. So, okay, so let's try and come up with a motion. What so, if I'm, and I can take this back and bring this back to you, or we can go back and forth with this. What if? Um, Instead of delineating the seats by geographic location, kind of underneath that table, there's a spot where it kind of gives some guidance to city council when they're making their selection about preferences given to certain applicants. 
what if instead of having the seats delineated by location in town, it's just preferences given to applicants that represent a diverse location, diverse business locations throughout the city. Um, and then that opens it up, it's less prescriptive. So you're, so you're saying that would be it? So there would be there no would verbiage that says- there's five business owner seats. And then underneath it would say, preference is given to business owners that represent, and we list out these diverse locations within the city, and preference would be given if any of them live with it. I mean, I mean, yeah, that's I mean, part I, of where, where this is I coming from. I see it, and, and if that's the way Clemson Next wants to go, and maybe I get outvoted on this committee, but I think the corridor idea You're okay, is good. I'm, I'm good with that. How do you it's all the, feel about that? Yes, I, I'm good with the corridor, and, and, okay. and I would most likely be the one to lose their seat, which would be fine. Um, I, so I you think live, it's an excellent idea. You live in the city. I do. Am I, am I out of bounds? I, do you think I'm out of bounds by saying giving preference to someone who owns, who lives in the city and owns a business um, is kind of unfair to folks who spend as much time in this city as we do and don't get to vote at the ballot box? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you see that as unfair? My stance. And I'll well, be honest. You, well, the reason why I, if, I, if I see it as unfair is because y'all are willing to serve. I think. Let's face it, I mean, we're, it's all kind of academic, but really are people beating down the doors to get on this committee? Um, you know, what's the, uh, there's is there a line down the, down the street? So if it gets to the point where you have that many people who really want to serve, then maybe we can get a little more picky. But I think, <laughs> you know, at this point, do we have... Uh, do we need the verbiage in there because we have the discretion of counsel? We may have to be, you know... You know, twisting arms to get people to. I think another give point up, is exactly time. what you're saying about the people who need, who would like to run a business mm -hmm. in Clemson. The people, the exact people you're talking about serving. I just want to make sure they're represented. So the thing is, and not once, just me. <laughs> once they own that business in Clemson, most likely those people you're talking about are probably will they be living in Clemson as well? Uh, well, that's. I mean, that was my goal. So that would. So I mean. I'm, I'm just saying if that person moves outside of the city, then that means that they would potentially not be able to have a seat as well because after the effort that's gone into incubating them to get into a business in the city. Yeah. Okay. So they should also be afforded the opportunity to, to be on a committee like oh, this. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, we're talking, you know, we're talking years down the road here. Especially so, Shannon, I, I don't think it. we're... You're okay with this if I take out that second sentence that says preference is given to applicants that live within the limits yeah. of the Yes, ma'am. Everything else you're okay Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I would like to add a ninth. <laughs> and I, a ninth. I would motion that we have a ninth member. That way we, there's no... And, and we can... Okay. Yeah. I, it seems like the way to go. Okay. Sorry, Shannon. I, I, okay. Okay. I can do that, that and I will, I will take that to council. You probably didn't think that was good. <laughs> That's why, that's why I brought it here so right. for your for your feedback. Thank you, Shannon. Right. Okay, now that we have a quorum, Doug's, uh, if we could uh, just kind of backtrack and um, have an motion to approve the meetings from the August nineteenth meeting. I so much. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Uh, meetings. Uh, minutes for the August 19th economic development meeting uh, have been approved. All right. Curbside pickup parking. Uh, I believe last time we had talked, we were going to possibly change the dedicated spots that are dedicated by business to more of a general 15 minute parking. Um, Andy, any update on signage or? Has there been any pushback from the police department on parking enforcement for that or anything? No, what we, what we think we can do is what staff would recommend doing is pulling out the designated spaces per business. Mm -hmm. like we'll pick on Doug, get rid of those two or one, whatever he's got. Out there. Right. That'd be allowed for COVID to happen. And then replace those with um, 
equitably distributed 15 minute spaces all over town. And uh, the problem is we don't, our one enforcement officer won't be able to make that work effectively. So we'd have to look and get another enforcement officer to do it. <coughs> Talking to Chief, our enforcement officer, and Lindsay, who's over parking now, we think we could really benefit from another parking <laughs> enforcement officer. There's just so much activity going on down there. And then you're going to have the hotel coming online. And that's going to be an interesting dynamic with their parking visitors and the valet situation. That um, so we think we can immediately pull up those um, curbside pickup signs, but it may be a little while, like within the next year or so, before we put in those 15 minutes spaces. Now, would the would the extra parking enforcement officer be the the, the cost of that be offset by the the kiosks that we've talked about for Old Street parking down College Avenue? If we were able to meter the spaces, yes, I would use parking okay. revenue to offset those costs. Okay. If we go to meter spaces, which is, I think, the end, we've mm -hmm. all discussed and we think it's the answer, um, we, we would we would then need a new another parking attendant is anyway, correct? Yeah, you would still need the attendant because you still have to check the vehicle. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but, but in the future, we're probably going to need more parking enforcement officers. Well, instead of using more than two, we're going to look at technology, like drive-by technology, things where you just, instead of manually doing, you just ride by and it takes a reading. There's some technology out there. That makes but fun. the number of hours that, I mean, she can't work. Oh, you're talking about going beyond uh, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Yes. Yeah, we'll have to look at that. So is there anything else you need from this committee to, to kind of keep that ball moving forward? Well, what, we, what we would like to have from a staff perspective is if, if this committee thinks that going that meter route is the way to go and to create 15-minute spaces throughout town, it would be nice to have a motion from this committee that says it's something that the, the downtown businesses particularly would like to see us go. And then we would probably follow up with that with another meeting downtown, with, invite everyone there, right? okay. and throw it out there too, because that's kind of that's a big move. Yeah. So then, what I, I don't want to do it since we have a razor thin quorum today. Uh, I'd like to put it on next meeting's agenda for us to vote on a motion for that very thing, and we can come up with a verbiage and get it out to all the members so that they can have an informed vote next meeting. I don't think we should vote on that motion right now. Yeah, okay. we can we get a merchant meeting together okay. between now and then, and we can discuss this with everyone. Yeah, I think that's the best way to go. And then come back with that. You'll have that, that yeah. information. Okay. Now, I missed the last meeting, and you told me that, that this was one of the topics. One thing that I want to make sure everybody has a clear picture of also, off College Avenue, so all the the two-hour spots off. I'm talking about up Keith, McCall. Right. Yeah, it's going to be all that. Right. right. So, but the, but the importance of going into the weekend is that on three at three o'clock on Friday, all of the spots all over the whole neighborhood are occupied, and the cars sit there all weekend long. And they're either bar employees or they're visitors to the apartment, or or they're residents of the apartment that want their car easier accessible than the garage. Going in the garage. Yeah. yeah, that's where the meter. So yes, we'll, I exactly, guess exactly. those are the kind of things we'll talk about at the merchant meeting. Uh, and then if we can get good notes from that, then hopefully the next the next uh, meeting of this committee, we can make a motion to make a recommendation to, to council to kind of start moving that ball forward. Agreed. Agreed. So I'm putting down here that we're going to discuss. Cameron, I just don't know enough about the situation to pass, you know, give an opinion, really. Well, you will be on the, the list to do the, for the merchant meeting. We'll just make sure that we we put you on that. Oh, cool. Um, right. It would be good for, I think, it would be good for anybody in this committee to attend a merchant meeting. So the merchant meeting is just an open call, right? And let me tell you, some of them, it, they are not bashful about giving you their opinion. Right. So, yeah. um, 
which we love, right? That's And those are all my neighbors. I know every one of them. I eat lunch in their establishments and everything. So if you see that come through on your email, and if, Andy, if, if, is, does Lindsay send that out? Is that who? I usually send it out. You send it out? I haven't been able to figure out how to share the distribution list. Oh, uh, okay. If we could just put every committee member on that to actually be able to attend if you want to. Yeah. Um, I think great. it could be helpful. Yeah. I can forward it to you if, Thanks, if, yeah. if I get it. I'll just yeah. And that, that meeting, Andy, was kind of your nemesis, right? I mean, yes. you, you originated that. Um, yeah, it's filled the meeting. Um, the downtown merchant meeting started off with the assistant administrator named Chip Boyles. Many many years ago. Okay, and I thought you were the was origin. Kind of new to it, and then I was an intern and I tagged along. I kind of <laughs> stayed in the car and hung out and stuff. And yeah, it's a great and idea. Just evolved <laughs> into that. Stayed in the car for safety reasons. <laughs> no, no, I just kind of tagged along and listened. <laughs> okay. And Andy, you can use my. We if we do it, you can do it at the tavern. Space. Your space works well. Okay, next item. Shannon, you're back up. <laughs> so, uh, the vacant building registration. Yes, so there's nothing written up about this yet. This is just preliminary to get y'all's feedback on this. Um, so, some of you guys that sat in on some of the Clemson Next meetings are aware of what this is. An idea came out of Clemson Next to create um, basically to do two things. Um, when we have vacant commercial space in the city, to encourage the owner of that space to fill it in a timely manner, but also to make that space somehow publicly, to make entrepreneurs and other business owners looking for space more aware of what space is available. So we're trying to kind of serve two missions here with one, one database. So the idea was to create a vacant building or vacant space registration it would apply to all commercial spaces in the city. It may end up also applying to rental um, housing, the way it just depends on how it's worded and legally how we have to word that. But that if a space was vacant for, say, over 90 days, the owner would have to pay a fee and also register it with the city, which really just means checking in with the city, um, making sure the city has the owner information, the contact information in case business owners, new business owners or entrepreneurs come in and are looking for who to contact for different spaces. And the city would maintain a database of what is actually vacant. Um, and there would be a fee attached with that. And then the other, um, the other thing is they would also be required to put some sort of window decals on their space, a standardized decal that indicates to everyone walking by that that is vacant and available space. So really just taking your, your temperature on, on that requirement. What is the fee for? Out. The fee that's collected? The fee is to encourage them to rent that space more quickly. So it wouldn't be a one-time fee. It would be a, I mean, when we looked at it before, like a, an every two month or every three month fee, it would be a rolling fee. Does so that go toward we, the listing of some we sort? Did we disband the I, Sorry. Oh, I'm just asking, does that go toward uh, listing that property somewhere where people can see what vacant properties are available? So the hope is the city would have that database available on their website. Okay. So one other caveat that we all talked about on our little subcommittee was that we would also require them to pay into an escrow governed by the city maybe for the... Uh, for the upfit. So the upfit is going to be a separate policy okay. we're working on because that would be for new buildings. So that'll be separate from this would be really retroactive and apply to every commercial space in the city. So we're going to separate those two out. Gotcha. Yeah, and they were going to have to submit a marketing plan. Was that still part of it? I think that was part of the upfit yeah, plan for new buildings. Yeah. Is there a way to structure the fee based on square footage? The, sure. My my concern is is you're gonna you're gonna catch up in this the mom and pop landlord along with big you know mm -hmm. multi state mixed use landlord mixed use okay. um, and I'm I, that just I, I understand the I understand the fee and I agree with the spirit of it I'm just concerned like I say with 
with someone who's got, I know that there's a spot at the end of um, where East Park Printing is, right where you make a right to go into Publix on the end there. It used to be a psychologist, I think. It's been vacant for like three years. But I don't think that's an, they haven't jacked the rent up to discourage anybody from moving in there. And then the, you see what I'm saying? I'm not. So, so let, me, let me add to that. The, uh, maybe the word mixed use needs to be come into play with this particular one. Because if a commercial developer comes in and builds a fourplex, they're very motivated to get that full. Right. right? It's the mixed use that uh, has presented this problem for us. Okay. And maybe we need to focus that policy around mixed use because they, it's really of no incentive to, uh, to the developer to rent out that space that he has to pay all this up for. Okay. Uh, right? The only thing he gets back is the tax portion of that uh, of that space. They are either structured around the square footage. Well, know. we can look at square footage, and I can ask and see if we could limit it to to mixed use because that would help out, um, say, if you own a, an apartment complex. That I mean, right now, if it was all commercial, it would right. apply to your vacant apartment right. as well. And would it so apply to look it would apply it. the guy that owns Bilo that had to shut down? Right? Mm -hmm. That would be yeah. That'd be tough. Susan? Yeah, because I mean, when we were in the committee, and I think, am I missing meetings? Because I'm not hearing about. No. Okay. Because we were talking about, I think we were addressing mainly those businesses that were, those open spaces that were downtown, like in the, bay, the first floor, ground floor of those new apartment buildings that had, you know, gravel floors in them. They, had, they weren't even ready for a tenant and that they've been empty, you know, right. on day one. And I think... That was pretty much what we had been talking okay. about for the most part. Was right. addressing yeah, that, that was the root cause of this yes. particular policy. Because it does have a negative effect on y'all's businesses, right. too. Yeah. People are walking past just these, these and, empty and fronts. Like Doug said, I mean, if someone, a, a strip mall or a, just a strictly residential space, there there's no incentive to keep that empty that I know of. You know, but there is... So I guess the reason why you would want those spaces included is because they are vacant commercial space in the city, and maybe those mom and pop, pop places are more affordable. Oh, well, they are more affordable than the mixed use spaces. So you would want them in your database. You would yeah. want them registered. We just have to figure out maybe how to make that fee. Right. And we were also trying to incentivize those developers into making the businesses, the rental spaces, more affordable, so local business owners can actually afford to have their business in there. Yeah, I kind of have a, I kind of have a, a, a theory that it artificially inflates uh, the rental market in Clemson to have those just sit there because they don't really. I don't want to say I don't want to say they in a universal term. I, I don't know what the motivation is to actually rent those spaces. Right. So there's not much motivation to bring that rent down to a level where somebody finally reaches a threshold where they say, "Okay, I'll take that spot now." I couldn't, I couldn't afford it at $25 a square foot, but at $18 a square foot, I could make a business go at it. Mm -hmm. um, and when you add yeah, in upfit charges up with, to that, it's it's going to be even and the higher more taxes, difficult. The higher taxes that come with that, I mean, those buildings have monumental tax uh, base. I mean, we did encounter, there. somebody said there was a problem with, there was the, uh, the water and sewer infrastructure. So there was some right. issues with that with um, capacity. But so caught, up, caught up so in this would be like the old silver closet underneath um, TDs, or, yeah. but the, over in that area, right? Is that I a, mean, the, the TD has, has anything been in there in the last 15 years? TDs rents it. Huh? TDs is it. Oh, is it storage? Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but it would, you know, what would get caught up in this would be well, now a coffee shop has gone in there, but like underneath, yeah, underneath the uh, Lynch's, the Lynch's building, yeah, um, and and definitely the fee, the vacant property fee on rental residential rental property would be problematic because then you might at one point drive the rent rate below the the mortgage on the property. You they would eventually be incentivized just to rent it for a loss. Because they were already losing money on the fee. Yeah, and then the fee may be normal. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, 20 so bucks a month. We can look at maybe, so it, I'm, it looks like there's agreement that yes, the registration and the database is a good idea, and we need to look at how to make the fee kind of equitable by maybe type of space and 
use of something the space. Like that, yeah. Something yeah. like and, that. And make sure drafts. that it really targets the mixed use. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, we were targeting, we were looking at, at things that were highly visible. Yeah. Yeah, I, understand. I, was in the I was in a meeting for the steering committee that discussed that very thing, too, yeah. All right. Any, you guys have any other comments? I'll bring that back to you once we, we work through it. Okay. okay. Awesome. Thank you, Shannon. I just didn't want any collateral damage from making a rule like that. Yeah. Okay. New business. I saw where uh, trick or treating is on. Is that yes. right? I believe it's the twenty sixth. It is Tuesday. Twenty sixth. And the Christmas parade is also on. Uh, yes, that's on. Yeah, right. Christmas parade is on, and it is also on a Tuesday, the seventh. Is that right? Yeah, it's like the first week of December. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, we have rock the block going on now over in Patrick Square. How how's that been received? We've had one event that went very well. It's a it's a whole different vibe than what we have on College Avenue, but it's cool in its own way. It's just not the same thing. I which I, is nice. You love that for yeah. It needs it needs some longevity behind it. When's so, the next one? That was the first one in what, 250, 300 people in the That's what I heard. I wasn't there, but I heard it was about that time, yeah. right? So it needs some longevity behind it to be able to attract more people to the area. I think the concern is if we, there's only four and then it stops, then it loses momentum. And I think that maybe perhaps the yeah. aid is to see like how it goes with the sec, maybe through the second, third, to see if it continues on. You know, it, is that something that the city continues to do or is that something that Patrick Square then takes over? Um, these events were kind of brought on outside of the normal budget process, so we're kind of just making them go with this amount here. The idea is to see how successful they are, and then really investing in them moving forward. Um, I think this year we're going to be, we're, just, we're committed to the four events, but we need to do some more investing in things like chairs and tables, and we'd like to get a trailer maybe even so we cannot have to rent all this stuff and we can do more, more effectively. So yeah. this year we're probably just going to stick with four, but if there's a huge response and we can always reevaluate with other sponsors and partners, we might be able to do something. You know, as we uh, move forward and the city grows and develops more, when we think about these different corridors, uh, the next committee has outlined, it, it might be one of the things where we try to do this in another location as well. You know what I'm saying? Patrick Square gets one downtown, got four, Patrick Square gets four, and then we find another right. hub of activity, we can do it there as well. So let me ask you, what, what was the motivating factor of moving this out of downtown into Patrick Square? Was it to change the demographic that was attending to get it away from more of the college students to more of like a, more of adult? Type of field? It was to expose more businesses throughout the city. Okay. Give the whole geographic equity issue. So I will, I'll have. tell you the impact. So our revenue for the previous Tuesday, which we're really busy on Tuesday, we have a Taco Tuesday, we're usually full. Took all the business outside of the inside of the business to the outside of the business. The regular customers that attend that were completely gone. Although, it equaled out for us because we got the new revenue. There was more business exposure. People who had never been to Patrick Square attended. I think Joe's Pizza. They were kind of negatively impacted with closing of the street, things like that. Um, they lost some of their some of their to go parking. Now there was a meeting today, which ironically it was like at the same time as this meeting, so I can't do it. I don't. But um, those are some of the things that need to be addressed. I think. I think that the important thing is to either keep it consistently there or exactly like you're saying, it's something where it, maybe you have two in Patrick Square, maybe you have two somewhere else and then it hops around, which would help to promote the different areas for business, but not negatively impact business too. 
The doors and cons are moving it because people are like, where is it this way? Right. Like, they yeah. can't find it. Um, uh, yeah. But is it supposed to be like a a year a year round thing or just every other Tuesday for a couple of months? So the, uh, it's Tuesdays for the uh, second and fourth Tuesday of Because there's one October 12th. I've got October 12th and October 26th. Yeah, they're done after October. Yeah. So I mean, think that's four Tuesdays out of your whole year. Is that okay? Yeah, if it's if it's consistently four Tuesdays and it's there and people know every year this is four Tuesdays now. Yeah. Or if it moves around, I think that's helpful. Mm-hmm. But there's so many, there were so many unknowns that came through. Like, for example, even selling... Um, selling alcohol on the sidewalk. That was something that was addressed. But then Patrick Square said, you know, this is a this is a private uh, community, so and the streets are closed, so that should be allowed. But then there was some input from SLED that no, it should not be allowed. So it's like, okay, well, you know, which one was it? Some uh, positioning of the stage, uh, the plans for chairs and stage positioning, a lot of those things were just unknown, and it's kind of like a trial and error type of thing. But I think that that trial and error came at the expense of revenue to some of the businesses. Okay. So, um, does Patrick Square it, have a, a merchant association? Association? Not a strong one. It's it's nobody attends it. Really. But they have yeah. the farmers market there every Thursday for you know the whole spring through summer. So, you know, what's the, you know, have you seen an impact from that? Because it can be quite heavily attended. I don't know if you've done trick-or-treating at Patrick Square, but. That's phenomenal, right. It is, it's bigger than downtown. It's huge, yeah. yeah. And there's a Christmas um, bazaar. But we get what you're saying, believe yeah. me. Right. When yeah. they shut, when, when College Avenue gets shut down, we all get, we all get affected. Yeah. So we, we feel you. I'd like to share some extra insight on some of your observations. We downtown, especially when we do the when we did the uh, on the avenue, uh, those nights Tuesday Tuesday nights is a huge night for us because it's double points day. Uh, families bring their kids out and they come to your pie. And your Tuesday is probably one of our biggest days of the week. On the avenue, that kind of brings it down significantly because everybody's down on the avenue instead of going to your pie. But, the, but, the, but, so I, but I don't look at it as finite as Tuesday night. I look at it, all those families that are coming down to the avenue that are now, you know, re-exposed to, oh, I can come downtown. And they come. Mm-hmm. And my volume is way, I'm up 20% versus my best year since probably June or July forward. Uh, and I think the avenue and bringing the people back into the town uh, is part of that. So I, I look at it more as an exposure benefit that's long term and, and so the avenue or the rocket at uh, Patrick Square it's an exposure it's a marketing uh, day for you whether you see the business that day or right. you see it for the rest of the week after that day um, it's a marketing boom and for us we didn't lose any business because that there were other places that kind of lost business on that day however I think it's the thing where there has to be I think a long term commitment for that Right. So it needs to be something where, okay, this was the inaugural um, rock the block, and then it continues on. Whether that's taken over by Patrick Square, the city continues it, I think it's something that has to continue, just like the farmer's market that you mm-hmm. mentioned. Yeah. People know every single Thursday there's going to be a farmer's market. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And everybody's not necessarily, I mean, there's some things with their bylaws and departments for vendors with produce, and they're doing better with that. But uh, soon. Not that everybody's always pleased with it. However, they always know it's going to be there, and yeah. it's always it's always on Thursday. So if you if you have the consistency of it, I think it's good. Trick or treating in Patrick Square, minus COVID, that happens every year, and it's and it's a big event. And people look forward to it. But to have something that's that's uh, you know maybe four rock the blocks, and it's like okay, we're not doing this anymore. Then people are like. I think it kind of diminishes the value of events like that. The idea is to have one in the summer and one in the fall mm-hmm. Diff- um, in a different locations. My camera says we could do them in other locations too. And I, I can tell you now, I mean, when, 
we do events, we try to think of everything the first time, but I mean, we've closed College Avenue down and no one's done any business many times. You know, yeah. We finally found, we experimented enough to where we've got one that worked. So we're going to do some tweaking and stuff, mm-hmm. and it'll be consistent. The plan is to do this ongoing. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, old business. Yeah. All right. If there's nothing else. The, I, I did have one thing, and this is maybe the wrong time, wrong place, is we look towards economic development. We know for a fact that getting heavy manufacturing or even light manufacturing ceilings is not an option. But we do have a significant population that those types of jobs, COVID has shown us that some of the service industry jobs are going away because when we quarantined and less people in the workforce, you, 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 we're going to end up with robots vacuuming the halls. The Husqvarna went to great lengths to make a new lawnmower that takes away one person's job who cut grass. So we have to think about how we're going to serve or, or get gainful, fulfilling employment for people that we don't want pushed out of the workplace nor pushed out of our community. And transportation sometimes is an issue. Right now we have the cat bus brings people from Oconee County, Seneca into our town and some of those people are not being gainfully employed. They're just using the bus as a recreation activity. But is, is there a way for the city of Clemson, cat bus and other ways to get transportation to, I, I'm going to use the Pickens County Industrial Park. Uh, like I said, these jobs that people used to would use, that walkable cat bus to the university, service industry type jobs, those people would still need to be employed and we need to think about transportation solutions for them. So, there, and I think this is the think tank uh, incubator thing that has come out of Clemson next. I'm going to follow my sword two home games back to back in an August graduation since our last meeting. I have not followed up with Shannon on any of any of that about what that's even been uh, kind of conceptualized as other than some casual conversation that we've had. That's, that's on me. That has not been forgotten about. Um, and I think a lot of that would fall under that particular conversation, would it not, Shannon? I was under the, the incubator entrepreneurship idea, probably more so under that, maybe the business um, improvement district. Okay. Uh, but the idea of the traffic and the bus and the transit um, definitely falls within things that the Clemson Next dealing with cat bus would need to, to consider. Okay, I just, it's something that's always on my mind. I just had yeah. to bring it up. Okay. But the, did the incubator idea move forward? The incubator the idea has, so uh, Catherine Watt has been moving forward with this kind of entrepreneurship resource. And so the incubator idea, I've been talking with her about moving that under what she's doing. That seems to be like a more, a more natural fit place for that to live especially since the university, the idea originally was to partner with the university and they're already moving forward on their own. So for now, for that to kind of move into this entrepreneurship space is where it's sitting right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Who's that? Because I didn't talk to her. Pardon me? Who is that you're talking to? Catherine Watt, city councilwoman. Catherine oh, okay. Watt. All right. All right. If there's nothing else, the meeting is adjourned. All right. Thank you.